good afternoon. Well, I should say actually good evening. So being the last speaker of this session, I think my, my job is pretty simple. Showing you some slides and then bye. Well, I think the thing uh, I'm going to talk about uh, is very close to our heart and also something that we are passionate about from ICT in Education Unit at UNESCO uh, Bangkok. So this is about capacitating teachers and teacher educators for e effective ICT pedagogy integration. Uh, it's, it's part of our pledges to promote digital equity. Okay, so as I said, it just, uh, I'm going to present uh, some, some of our initiatives that has a direct relation in promoting uh, digital equity. And this is uh, quickly my outline of presentation, what is the digital debate scenario, and then uh, digital equity discourse and our uh, um, initiatives in terms of uh, free educational resources and professional development of teachers and teachers educators, and finally some, some of the impact of our work. Uh, well, at this point of time, I think uh, this, is, this is widely recognized that ICT has a crucial role in the development of uh, skills and capacities that are needed uh, in this century. Uh, there are some debate still, still persist. And, and there is another recognition that if we can't really provide that kind of opportunities like access to ICT or use of ICT, that will ultimately result to exclusion in terms of social, educational, and economical. And that will also lead to some sort of knowledge divide. And, and from that assumption or premise, actually, the whole uh, discourse around digital equity or uh, digital divide uh, actually uh, formed. And what is the recent scenario of digital divide, and that is one of the measures that exist, uh, is called ICT Development Index, IDI, that uh, UN's uh, sister concern, ITU, they, they conduct every year. And if you look at from their three scales, is access of ICT, use of ICT, and skills in using ICT. These are really uh, three different index, and this is kind of composite index. Uh, for developing countries and least developing countries, it's, it's the index is really sort of alarming. Uh, just just uh, taking one example, just access, for developing countries, in 2015, it's 4.66, and for LDCs, actually, it's even, even, even half of the developing countries. Uh, that's an interesting um, chart or uh, graph, again, from ITU. Uh, it's, it's, it's according to region. Uh, if you look at the Asia Pacific, you will see it's kind of, it, it has a good average, a bit more than Africa, but the range is high. That actually says the Asia Pacific region is one of the most diverse region in terms of IDI. So in one hand, we have countries like Korea, they are always top in the list in terms of internet penetration, or countries like Singapore, Hong Kong. But on the other hand, we have countries like Afghanistan or Bangladesh, Nepal. So that, that's really kind of striking. And uh, in terms of internet penetration, uh, at, at this point of time, uh, it's about 3.2 billion all over the world. And one of the recent, very recent statistics from or, uh, World Bank Group it still says 60% of total uh, world's population are not connected yet. So that figure only is about 40% of total population. And for the uh, least developing countries, it's only 9.5% of their population. For uh, developing countries, is about one third of their population. Uh, so it's, it's again according to region and development status. Uh, it's for least developing countries, it's only 9.5%. Well, that's all about actually access to ICT, more, more or less. But when we talk about digital equity in education, it's actually more than access. Uh, wh what does that mean? Uh, some of the commentators, they, they kind of argue that it has to be access to high quality digital educational materials. There has to be uh, opportunities so that educate, educators can 
create and share, share digital content. And also there should be opportunities to reach, receive related training. And the last one is also that available access to high, high quality research. Because if we can't really ensure this, that kind of access, uh, it's, it's not just only limited to access to internet or access to ICT usage. There has to be all these components in there to ensure is digital equity there. Otherwise, it will be a huge knowledge divide around the world. Just from my personal experience, I have been graduated from one of the developing countries back in 2004 and, or five, and I, I received my master's degree actually without reading any sort of say, even, even, even an article from a B category journal. So that's the scenario, and I, I don't think things have much sort of improved in the last one decade or so. But of course, there are some promises or some opportunities we are seeing, at least from the open educational resources journal that we can see now, now at this point. Uh, and that was recognized uh, the importance of that kind of component that actually says the empowerment of teachers or teacher educators. Uh, in order to address all these digital equity and digital divide issues in the education, and that has been uh, well recognized in the uh, Sustainable Development Goal 4 and also Education 2030 Agenda. Uh, so what we are doing from UNESCO Bangkok to address this issue? Uh, since 2002, uh, 2002, actually, the ICT in Education team formed within uh, UNESCO Bangkok, and since then we have been doing uh, things like developing on online resources and, and distributing to um, member states and also related training and things. One of, the, one of the things I just uh, want to highlight here, actually we are not developing resources, we are curating resources. Because a as you can see at this, at this point of time, it's full of open access resources everywhere. I think one of the challenges that we have been hearing from our member countries from the teachers or teacher educators, they really kind of face challenges to, to select or to identify quality materials from all this information ocean. So that's the thing we are doing. Uh, we are kind of curating the already those resources available, and then we are curating them and we are making them available for, 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 for teachers or teachers educators use, uses. Uh, how we are doing that? We have created one uh, network. We call them resource distribution and training center. Uh, it's, it's a network of actually 24 teacher education institutes in this region, and they are from 12 different countries, and they range from all the way from Afghanistan in West Asia to uh, Fiji in Pacific. Uh, and uh, th there are 24 teacher education institutes at this point. And just I'm going to show you quickly. Uh, it's, it's about like seven cities we have been distributing, like in the last two years. And before that, actually, there are uh, other resources. Uh, what was the reasons for cities? So that, that's where actually our digital equity things come in. Most of the countries or, or the DTCs that we work with, they're from developing countries. And they, they, they don't still have that much internet connection or internet accessibility. So basically, it's kind of still old method. It has to be CD so that they can use them. And um, last year, we, we kind of distributed 13,000. And we just received recently all the reportings from all these uh, RDTCs. Uh, it's, it's actually, in the last two years, more than 37,000 CDs. We, we, are, we are now estimating all these figures. Um, so so it's, it's a good amount, actually. Mm. At this point, we are now updating our resources because this came like two or three years back. So, you know, in the education, every, everything becomes old. So it has to be updated. I, I just wanted to show you quickly. How can, okay. So this is one of the resources we, we recently developed. So this is kind of at the final stage. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be distributing this soon to our RDTCs. This is about science. This is for lower secondary level. And when we uh, curated these resources, about like 10 countries from this Asia-Pacific region, their lower secondary 
science curriculum has been mapped out and all these materials or contents has been uh, identified using some um, analytics or frameworks and uh, a group of science education expert in this region, they, they, they work for that. I just quickly want to show you So just uh, take one example, natural resource. So it's about like water solution, air, pollution. So if I go, go down, so these are all different uh, resources that we collected and these are all uh, copyright clearance, so we, we kind of facilitated so all these uh, teacher education institutes they can actually uh, redistribute and they can reproduce and then they can they can use that So these are the two that I just showed you. Uh, one is about science, another is classroom productivity. Just for the time sake, I'm not going to show you that classroom productivity tool. It's about like all these different software or applications that are available. Like it's all open source applications. So there is no sort of copyright or like you don't have to really pay for that. So we put all these things in one, one, one CD and we are also going to uh, circulate to all our RDTCs and if you see, uh, I, th I think it's not visible, so it's for audio, video, fun, learning, office publishing, and video, graphics, all, even, even test builder, like assessment, related to assessment. Well, so uh, two of the main responsibilities of our network is, one is like they have to distribute all these uh, resources to their nearby schools or all the pre-service or in-service teachers, they come to those teacher education institutes for, for receiving training. So that is part of, one of their kind of mandate. The other thing is also they have to provide training to those teachers. They are like in-service teachers or pre-service teachers. So basically those trainings are around how those teachers can use these resources when they go back to schools. Uh, and again, like uh, last year, it was about like about 400 participants received training, and so far we have received recent statistics. It's like more than one, around 150 trainings altogether that they provided, and it's about like 9,000 participants. So it's mostly in-service and pre-service teachers. Uh, also, as part of continuous support to these teacher educators or teacher education institutes, every year we organize one uh, regional seminar. We call it. So in this regional seminar, all these teacher education institutes, they actually share some of their better good practices. At the same time, they continue some research, like how those resources are helping teachers in the field, and they, they share those research uh, in, in, in this seminar. But at the same time, we organize some, some workshop uh, very specific to their needs. So for, for, for example, last year, it was held in South China Normal University in China. Uh, they are one of our RDTCs, and uh, we actually delivered two workshops. One is about design thinking uh, for, for, for education, and another is media, uh, media and information literacy. And that's related to safe, effective, and responsible use of ICT. So these are uh, very uh, specific to their needs. Well, just, I think I have talked more. It's time to see something. <laughs> So just very quickly, well, again, it's made by South China Normal University from our seminar last year. I just wanted to show you very quickly. How can I show? Oh, it's started here.
Let's go to a. Oh, okay. One's on. about the impact of our work. Uh, we have been doing some research around that, and so far uh, our research says like all the resources we have been distributing through our RDTC, uh, they actually found it very useful. I mean, uh, especially teachers at the level of schools when they use uh, for their, uh, use them for, for teaching their kids, uh, mainly because of their uh, interactivity features and uh, user-friendly features of that. And also the training uh, they are receiving, and also RDTC, they are providing to the teachers, they are, they, 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 they are finding it useful for, for developing uh, their capacity in terms of delivering that ICT integrated pedagogy in the classroom. And as, uh, in terms of our future action, actually we will be continuing this support uh, to this network at this point. Uh, we are finishing our kind of last contract with all these RDTCs, so we are now in the phase of renewing the membership for these RDTCs, and we will be probably calling for new members to come in. And also there are uh, certain aspects and uh, certain uh, new elements or features will be developed uh, soon. And we hope through our this kind of activities, we are trying our best to address to that digital uh, divide issue and to promote digital equity. Thank you very much for your sharing.